the opportunity to have here again in Mexico, the zone, Broncolara, is a big opportunity to have good, good pubs in here. Yeah, we've had some amazing shows in Mexico recently. I mean, you know, the Estrada fight recently was a great card from top to bottom. And it seems that every show, every fight we put on in Mexico seems to be some entertainment. And I think this Saturday, exactly the same. Mexico City for the first time. The return of Maurizio Lara, but a great undercard as well. And you know, Lara's making a, a big name for himself now. You know, he's a dangerous man. And he's going to be in a great fight against San Martin. San Martin, uh, you can overlook yeah, I think the dangerous thing is everybody's talking about Lara against Lee Wood, against Josh Warrington, against Santa Cruz. But San Martin is a good opponent. You know, he's coming off seven straight wins. He went 12 rounds with Navarrete in a really good fight. But the, the thing with Lara is he comes out like a train. Right, the first three, four rounds. If you can get through those rounds, you know, that's when it starts to become really interesting. But with Lara, you never know. From the first bell, just all action. And that's why he's so excited. What will happen with that train if Lara beats San Martin? I think uh, we want to reschedule the Lee Wood fight. And I think the winner of that fight should fight Josh Warrington. Josh Warrington has a tough fight coming up against uh, Alberto Lopez from Mexico as well. He's mandatory challenger. The division's great. And the thing is, with Mauricio Lara, he will fight anyone. And that's so exciting for us because it's literally not an opponent he wouldn't accept. So it's great to see him fighting here. We expect a great atmosphere. It's a small venue, but it's going to be a great atmosphere and um, a great fight card from top to bottom. Mauricio Lara told me that the fight with Warrington is personal. Yeah. So it could be a good yeah, fight. Yeah, he, talk, he talks great. And, you know, Warrington has to win in December first. There is a possible unification with Lee Wood, but... Warrington against Lara 3 is a massive fight and you know Josh Warrington will take that fight Lee Wood will take the fight against Lara um, there are still maybe some question marks over Maurizio Lara if the fight goes long you know don't forget when we brought Maurizio Lara to fight um, Josh Warrington we didn't expect him to lose that fight but a lot of people said to me in the build up to that fight this kid can really punch like Navarrete said he's the, he's the biggest puncher he's been in with in sparring and I was like oh you know and you saw what happened so he's a very exciting fighter now you have a great schedule for the end of the year because you have tons of boxers doing their best in a great night yeah I mean you know last week we were in Australia this week of course Mexico City next week in London for Katie Taylor then Vivo uh, against Zerdo which for me it's one of the fights of the year you know huge fight card in Abu Dhabi then we're in Cleveland for Montana Love we've got Dillian White coming up with Estrada Chocolatito 3 uh, on December the 3rd December 10th Warrington against Lopez so non-stop but there's something always something special about coming to Mexico you know, um, because the fighters give it all even the opponents you know you know that guys like Reshat Mati this is a dangerous fight like this kid he, he's, he will do anything to win because it will change his life forever and, and fans know that when we do a show in Mexico these guys are going to put everything on the line what do you think about the fight uh, Bibol versus Zurdo in Abu Dhabi and Chocolatito Gallo Estrada 3 well the Bivol fight I think before the Canelo fight was a 50-50 fight right? okay. but because of the victory against Canelo Alvarez I think you have to say Bivol is a slight favourite but when we was in Abu Dhabi for the press conference he's huge you know I mean he was heavy at the time but still he's a huge 175 pounder Zerda um, but Bivo is full of confidence. You know, you have to put Bivo on the pound for pound list right now after his victory against Canelo Alvarez. But I just feel like it's a, it's a tremendous fight and, you know, one of the fights of the year. Estrada Chocolatito, I don't know what Chocolatito is eating, yeah. but I would like to have some because he's getting better <laughs> as he's getting older. He's yeah, like exactly. Benjamin Button. Right, you've seen that film where like, the older he gets, the better he, he gets, you know, and um, just one of the greatest fighters. You know, Estrada boxed well recently, but came through a tough fight. But the problem is the motivation. You know, when you're in a fight like that, you're just expected to win. He knows against Chocolatito, it's 1 1. This is the rubber match. You know, the last fight was a very close fight. Yeah. Chocolatito could have won that fight. But this fight, again, sometimes you make a fight you know can only be amazing like I saw the first fight on TV I promoted the second fight it's one of the best fights I've ever watched live the third fight will be just as good you know it's, it's a, just a tremendous fight do you, do you think it could be the fight of the year? Yeah, yeah I think it's difficult to not be a contender 
yeah. you know, because no one's going to get knocked out in that fight early. So you know it's going to go rounds, and every round's going to be competitive, every round's going to be thrilling. So therefore, I, I feel like the fight will go 12 rounds again, and it'll be backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. But right now, I have to say that Chocolatito is the favorite for that fight, in my opinion. What's okay. your vision for boxing in Mexico? How do you see the next few months and years playing out in terms of doing more events in Mexico? I think that, you know, every time we've been to Mexico, every show has been fantastic. The energy's been fantastic. The heritage, the history uh, in Mexico, the fan base, the understanding. And not just that, but for us, the audience in America has also been huge. Because don't forget that you know a huge proportion of the Zone subscribers in Mexico, are also, uh, in, the, in the US, are also Canelo Alvarez fans. Therefore, you know, they might have, you know, a Mexican or a Hispanic background and they're watching all these shows in Mexico. So for us, you know, we plan to do five to six shows a year in Mexico and unearth talent. Like Mauricio Lara was never supposed to be what he is now, right? But we found him, we gave him the opportunity and all I want is to see exciting fights for TV. And I know that when I put a Mexican in those fights, he gives us exciting fights. How many Mexicans do you have currently on your stable? Oh, I don't, I don't know to count, but <laughs> not enough. You know, uh, we, have, we, have a, we have one called Canelo Alvarez, he's quite good. You know, obviously Estrada, uh, Mauricio Lara, you know, so many other fighters that we're working with in, in Mexico as well. But like every show that we do, Erica Cruz Hernandez, of course, a female world champion. But every show that we do, we seem to find another talent. What are your thoughts on uh, Ray Martinez? Ray Martinez, tremendous fighter. He's got a tough fight against Arroyo. You know, this fight's been backwards and forwards. Don't forget, in that fight uh, with Arroyo, he got floored in that fight before the head clash, you know, and, and the cut. But he looks now like, he, you know, he was unlucky in the last camp because he got himself in great shape. He's with Eddie Reynoso. It's time for him to beat Arroyo and then unify the division. Eddie, I don't want to be mad at me because of this question, but how difficult is Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, yeah. communications and everything? Because Tyson Fury already showed that he will fight Chisora. Yeah, um, it was difficult. You know, look, it was never ideal coming off the Usyk defeat to fight Fury so quickly, but Joshua wanted to do it. The problem was is, you know, Fury talks a lot on social media, he makes unrealistic demands for deadlines and sign the contract today, and I knew that he was always going to fight. Don't forget that when he was negotiating with Joshua, he was also negotiating with Derek Chisora. And when they told us the contract must be signed today, it was three weeks later that the Chisora fight got signed. So there, there was no need for a deadline. So I don't know what to believe, but what I do know is the communication was good with his team. And we hope that eventually in 2023, that fight can get made. But it's a tremendous fight. Um, and, you know, Chisoro's my friend, got the opportunity, so good luck to him. Do you consider yourself like mm, disappointed not to have this fight? Yeah, I, I'm happy. My job, I work for Anthony Joshua, he's my boss. So whatever he tells me to do, I, I do. He told me I want to fight Tyson Fury, so we tried to make that happen. For me, coming off the defeat, I would still like him to work with his new team, get some confidence, you know, get active again. But at the same time, I do want to see him in the biggest fights. And, and Joshua against Fury, one of the biggest fights in boxing. Don't forget Joshua against uh, Dillian White, big fight. But Joshua against Deontay Wilder may be the biggest fight in boxing. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's one you just watch like that. <laughs> because someone <laughs> yeah. is knocking someone out in that fight. And, you know, Joshua will, will be back very early next year now. And, uh, you know, I want to see him get active. The heavy ones right now are very, very good because you have Andy Ruiz searching yeah. for Wilder for Joshua, it's a great fighter. Yeah, Ruiz, Ruiz Wilder is a brilliant fighter. You know, I really like Andy Ruiz. I thought he looked better against Ortiz, good victory. And, you know, I I see him beating Deontay Wilder, but, you know, I, Wilder was good the other night. Hellenius is, you know, maybe past his best, but still, Wilder is very dangerous. He's brilliant for the sport. And Andy Ruiz is a warrior, so he won't mind standing in front. You know, he has that low style that comes in over the top, and sometimes Wilder doesn't like that. A lot of the big heavyweights, and that's what Joshua struggled with. You know, I know he had him down, but you know, these small guys coming in, and I just think Wilder against Andy Ruiz is a brilliant fight, and hopefully we get to see it. Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz. 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, they've had two fights now. It's 1-1. One, one. Uh, I don't think it's a fight. You know, the second fight, Joshua won every round. But Andy Reid's maybe wasn't his best. But I, it's not a fight that we're looking at in the next two or three fights. But Joshua will fight anybody. And uh, certainly, if Andy Reid beats Deontay Wilder, then, you know, why not? You are the only promoter that is looking to Mexico City as a venue of boxing. Do you consider to take here Andy Ruiz the, the possibility of a big fight here? Maybe with the heavyweights? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the problem with coming to Mexico, and one of the reasons that promoters don't, is that you can't generate the big money on the gate, on the yeah. tickets, right? So they choose to go to Las Vegas, and you know, but for me, I mean, As a promoter, to do a Canelo Alvarez event in Mexico, you know, at Azteca or wherever, and to see that many people, like that's a historic event. And I know Canelo would love to do that. You are, of course, walking away from massive gate and money in Las Vegas and etc. But I think it's very important to bring these fighters now to their hometowns. You know, you saw it with Estrada recently in Hermosillo. You see it with Mauricio Lara uh, in Mexico City. You've seen it with other fighters in Tijuana. I think that the money that you lose on the gate is made up for in the atmosphere and the occasion, you know. And um, I think that in the past we've gone to different areas of Mexico with fighters that aren't from that area, you know. So, for example, we did Ray Martinez in Guadalajara. Well, really, Ray Martinez should be fighting in Mexico City, or and and when he does. It'll be crazy, you know. So I'd like to bring bigger fights. This is a big fight, but actually, world championship fights more consistently. And, and Estrada was a good, a good example of that. But it's difficult because you can't, you know, hit the same numbers that you can on the gate. But I think the atmosphere on TV, the energy, is amazing. Canelo Alvarez in Mexico City will oh, be man, it, but yeah, oh man. Yeah, yeah. But really, you know, Canelo has kind of reached the stage now. Where what, what is next? You know, what else can you do for your career and your legacy? For me, fighting internationally, not just in Mexico, but fighting in London, fighting in the Middle East, fighting in Japan, like wherever it's going to be, that is what all global great stars do. And for me to promote uh, to see that as to, uh, the Azteca would just be, yeah. you know, that would be something very special. And uh, like I said, it's difficult because as a fighter of his level you have to accept you're going to make half the money that you would to do it in Las Vegas but also he's a very proud man and I know that it would be emotionally you know special for him to, to bring a fight back to his people as this year ends and we head into 2023 what are your thoughts on the heavyweight di division do you have high expectations for the heavyweight division yeah I mean um The heavyweight division is always the most exciting division in the sport. Um, right now, you've got Anthony Joshua, you've got Tyson Fury, you've got Deontay Wilder, you've got Dillian White, you've got Andy Ruiz, yeah. you've got so many great fighters. As long as they keep fighting each other, you know that division is going to really carry the rest of the sport because that's the division that the media are interested in, the fans are interested in. And, and right now, the heavyweight division is hot. Usyk as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention his name. He's quite good as well. And um, yeah, I think the heavyweight division will give us great fights in 2023. What do you think? is next for Canelo? Um, I think that Canelo will be watching the Bivol Ramirez fight and hoping that Ramirez wins because he's Mexican but yeah. also won't be disappointed if Bivol wins because he wants to rematch him and, and I think Potentially, uh, Canelo against Bivol could be next uh, if, if Bivol was to win that fight. And, and the last part of the 2023, it's probably then the winner of Bivol against Surdo will fight in with Arthur Beterbiev or Anthony Yard. It's probably. Yeah, I think that if Bivol wins, um, you know, Canelo doesn't really isn't really interested in the world championship at 175. He's interested in the fight because he wants to avenge his defeat. Yeah. So I think if Bivol wins the fight, I think there's a very good chance he could fight Canelo Alvarez. Um, if Zerdo wins, maybe he fights better be able, or you know, I, I don't think for, for Canelo it's not really about fighting Zerdo. It's just he wants Bivol, the guy to yeah. beat him. But who knows? You know, Canelo Alvarez has the best resume in boxing. It, I cannot believe that people question the resume of Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. Like, just write it down on a piece of paper or read off the names that he's fought consistently. And you've got other guys, you know, great fighters like Benavidez. You talk about Benavidez now going to fight whose category? 
word, however you say it. Yeah. Good fight, strong fight, but come on. Yeah, like you're so, screaming out for Canelo Alvarez you have to make statements you have to make the fans say Canelo you must take like you know that when a fighter is big enough and when Canelo Alvarez feels like that fighter deserves his opportunity he will give him that opportunity but and I don't blame uh, Benavidez because I think Benavidez wants to be in big fights but it's embarrassing like when's it, when did Benavidez last fight like he's fighting now they announced a fight for January or February yeah. why, why you know again Caleb Plant you know saw him with a good win but Charlo who's Charlo fight like these guys